I'm hungry. I know how it feels. You're in the mood for a small snack, but at the same time you don't want to settle for scraps. Why not splurge for a can of Sweet Sue's canned whole chicken? That's right, it's not just pieces of a chicken, it's the whole thing. Skin, bones, giblets, and all. Soaked in a salty broth to spike that chickeny flavor. Quick to serve, ready to eat in 15 minutes. Manja! in on another thrilling episode of Limbo Grub! <sighs> yeah, that's what I like to see! Episode 270, just one episode away from the big 271, where I can finally say goodbye to this dump, Mocha will be here and me and my pets will be off to the real world and greener pastures. This is the dawn of a beautiful day! Ah! Hey, Stumpy, you're looking... spelt this morning! You know what, Stumps? I don't care what's waiting for me out there. I'm having such a beautiful day and ain't nothing gonna get me down! Lord Jaggy Technique, this is the North Star! Don't ever let him tell you that anime rots your brain. Just vent it, and prevent it! Do yourselves a favor. You have this item in your home for some bizarre reason! You have this item in your home! Open it up and eat it right away! Don't let it linger around your house for days. Not to say that this wouldn't last, no, there's enough additives and preservatives in here to keep this chicken safe for days, weeks, months. This is gonna be good for the next ice age, right? No, I mean eat this right away for the sheer principle of it. Think for a second how disturbing this is. There was a living being on this planet, grown to be killed, and have his body, his entire body, humiliatingly stuffed and sealed and submerged in juice inside this little, actually quite big can. It's like going to the supermarket and buying an urn. An urn containing a loved one. It's like taking a coffin from a mausoleum and dragging it to your home and using it as a cocktail table. Is this really that much different than a sarcophagus? You bring this 
item home. You don't leave it sitting around. Honor this poor creature. Unpop the cap. Release its soul. Well, thank you for shutting an animal. I believe I made this comparison in another episode, but I think it's even more apropos here. You ever see this movie, Inner Space? It was in the 80s and it had Martin Short and Dennis Quaid in it. You ever see it? Now, Dennis Quaid's character is, I don't know, he's kind of like a scientist, pilot, jack of all trades. I didn't write the thing, all right? He gets shrunk down into molecular level inside this little pod, and the scientists, they intend on injecting him into a sick laboratory cat, but he ends up through a series of mishaps getting injected into Martin Short. Now, Dennis Quaid's character is able to communicate with Martin Short's character, and he's trying to convince him to help him. But Short's not having it. No, he's just an ordinary guy. What can he do? No, he can't get wrapped up in this corrupt world of scientific espionage. There's actually a lot more to it than that, but I want to try to make this quick. So Martin Short won't help Dennis Quaid no matter what, but how does he convince him? He tells him if he doesn't, then Dennis Quaid's character will die, and Martin Short will have to know in the back of his mind till the day he dies. There will be a decayed, partially digested, microscopic corpse floating around in his bloodstream. That's enough to convince him to get wrapped up in this plot and almost die for this dude he never met! Isn't having this in your house the same damn thing? You ever read The Telltale Heart or The Cask of Amontillado? You ever play Silent Hill 4, The Room, where you put the axe to your wall and you find out there's a dead body hanging in satanic fashion that you've been living beside mere inches from your face unknowingly? Just think, there is a corpse in your home tucked away on a shelf just out of view, and you're living your every day trying to keep it out of your mind, but it's always there, floating, floating in its fluid. You know what? 200 episodes into the show, I think you're witnessing a first here on Limbo Grub because eating this item for once is not the main event. I mean, yeah, there's probably going to be some disgust behind it, but you know what? I'm not performing any daring do. I'm not doing here a stunt before your eyes by eating this item because it's just going to taste like chicken. It's going to be chicken that's riddled with additives and preservatives, but still, it's just going to taste like chicken. No, the big event of this episode is actually opening the thing and seeing what it looks like. So this is going to be one of those rare instances where the main event actually happens midway through the show. Because it's kind of like your AEW to your WWE, right? Whatever floats your boat. So anyway, in order to start this shindig, I better get the proper accoutrements. Wait. Wait. Can opener. Can opener. Tongs. Tongs. White Claw. A close-up? Honestly, we're doing a close-up here? You poor people, I apologize. It's just, I wish I had more directive control on this show. All right, here goes nothing. save the delicious broth. That is arguable. Place chicken in an uncovered pan, baste well with some of the broth, place in a hot oven at 475 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes, baste two or three times while heating. Well, I've never cooked a turkey before, but this sounds like something I could do. To prepare a delicious gravy, brown two tablespoons of flour, mix in a cup of broth. I don't 
think I'm going to be doing that. down dirty shame she had a life she had a soul you know what I think I'm going to call her Heidi that's right here is one to Heidi oh right They take a long time to turn around, so that's when you that's when you attack them. I'll tell you what, this is another instance of parents get your children's permission before preparing because in making this, I burnt myself not once, not twice, but thrice! It's all this damn juice! It's everywhere! And you'll know I didn't use all of it. I left a lot of it in that can. If I followed the directions to the letter, this thing would be swimming in juice. It would almost be like a soup. I would have had to prepare it in a pot. I barely used any of the juice in preparing this. Take a listen to the can. The thing is practically filled to the brim with juice. And if I were to come up with one word to describe this, the word, it has to be wet. So I don't want you armchair quarterbacks watching this video telling me, hey, DJ Clive, you prepared it wrong because if I were to prepare it the way that the instructions told me, I need a damn snorkel to eat it. In fact, you know, when I look back on this episode a couple years from now, my main takeaway is not gonna be how it looked. It's probably not gonna be the way it tasted because it just smells like regular ordinary chicken, but I'm gonna always remember just what an absolute mess this was. I feel like this juice is everywhere. It's all over the table, it's all over the floor, it's all over my arms. In fact, if you buy a can of this, and I don't know why the heck you would, I mean, just take a couple extra steps in the supermarket, you're gonna find some fresh Purdue chickens on sale there. Buy that instead, but that's besides the point. If you were to buy a can of this, you're probably not gonna run into the same problems, same foibles that I am, because, I mean, I'm juggling camera work, I'm trying to rig lighting as I'm preparing this, and, and of course, you know, I'm not much of a multitasker, and that's probably why there's juice all over everything. I I'm probably judging this unfairly. I think because it's so fresh in my mind, the process of making this really reminds me of those anchovies, and reminding me of the anchovies is never ever a good thing. Well, here it is, in all its splendor, the unfreshest chicken that you'll ever dumb did see. It spent however many years just toiling away fermenting, coagulating, masticating inside this blue can on a dusty old shelf somewhere. It went straight from Amazon, straight to the Divinity Crate, straight to Limbo, and into my domicile. I'll let you know how it tastes. 
This is actually pretty good. And you know what? Because I am the junk food connoisseur that I am, I'm going to say something bold. I actually kind of prefer this over regular unflavored chicken straight out of the oven because it kind of has a saltiness to it. Maybe it's in the way I prepared it. Maybe I put it in the oven a little bit longer than it should have. It's kind of like crispy on the edges. Or maybe it's the broth. It could be the broth. That broth that they were saying in these truffles. It's the delicious broth. You should put more of it in there. I mean, I don't think I need any more, but I think it, the amount of broth that I put in this helps. It brings out that flavor. It blasts it with flavor. It almost kind of tastes like chicken soup. And furthermore, extra fork come from? Anyway, as I was saying, just don't show me the preparation process. You give this to me, you don't tell me where it came from, you don't tell me that it was just preserved in a can for God knows how many months, years, whatever, and I'll eat it gladly. I mean, hell, I mean, you could even hide it in like a larger chicken-related dish, put some gravy on top of it, no one will know. You know how chicken soup chicken kind of tastes a little different than regular chicken? Well, just picture chicken soup chicken without the soup. My only one gripe about this and I really can't hold it against them because you gotta take into account this is a whole chicken here, so it's all the parts of the chicken that are, are represented here. It's gonna be mostly dark meat, so you better be into dark meat. I myself, I mean, I can take it or leave it. I much prefer the, the lighter meat uh, than the dark meat, but... I, I mean, hey, I mean, for what it is, I thought it was gonna be a horror show when we made this, right? And look at it, it actually looks like a legit dinner. So I gotta give him a lot of points for that. So if I were to give this a star rating, I'm gonna have to give it four stars. A higher rating than you thought, or maybe lower. To be debated, I guess. Higher than you thought. Picture where we were when we went into this episode. We were just surrounded by the horror. It was like the worst scenes from every disgusting movie that you've ever seen, all just enveloping you. Like the surgery scene from Saw 3, and like all the worst parts of Hostel and the Human Centipede, the part of Robocop where the guy gets shot to ribbons, all that is just surrounding you and encapsulating you to the point where you're all scrunched up. It's like the tiny little tunnel that the guy crawls through at the end of Shawshank Redemption. And looking at this, it's like coming out of the other end of that tunnel and screaming hallelujah as the rain pelts you in the face. But worse than you thought, when I opened up this can, I was expecting one thing. I was expecting, and that, that one thing was gross. I was expecting to stick my tongs in there and pull out a whole chicken for it to just like even make a sickening like suction noise as I pulled it out and splat it on the plate. What I got instead was actually way worse. You pull it out and it all falls apart in your hands and you're looking at like thin stretchy flesh just red and, and blue pieces? White pieces? I almost expected the chicken to cry out in anguish as I pulled it out of there. And as I looked down at this, I mean, there, there was a lot of delicious cuds of meat in there, but there's also all sorts of, like, entanglements of just webby-looking, fleshy things that I'm not going to touch with this fork. I'm just going to leave that there. And I mean, I had a couple good bites, but a lot of this is just going to end up going to waste. And I feel bad wasting food. I especially feel bad wasting meat because something had to die to, to, to put themselves on my plate so I can ingest it. The only thing that makes me feel better about this video is that maybe somebody out there would have thought of buying Sweet Sue's canned whole chicken for themselves and then saw what the ordeal that I went through in making it and said, oh no, that's not for me. And I inadvertently saved a chicken's life. Because all I've done right now, except for a few scant, salty, chicken soupy bites in there, is practically, metaphorically, spit on the life of something that probably had a worthwhile life at one point. You know what? To quote the new Captain America, we can do better than this. Yes, a lot of the bites in this were delicious, but from the amount that it filled me, it wasn't worth it. If you're gonna eat a chicken, do it the right way. Do it straight off of a supermarket shelf, and you eat every part of that chicken. You don't let any of it go to waste. There is way too much here that is inedible. I look at these weird, like, bones that are still red from, like, blood and... A regular chicken's not gonna give you that if you prepare it the right way. I mean, and why are these like these weird fuzzy pieces that look like cauliflower? Maybe I gave this too high a grade, I don't know. I'm not holier than thou. I'm not some vegan out here professing to you, the people who are watching, that you're sinful for eating meat. No, I say happily eat chicken. Go out and eat as many chickens as you want, but do it the right way because this is the wrong way. 
I feel as if too much of this is going to go to waste, and I feel bad for the animal that it had to die for this. Go out and buy some delicious fresh chicken, and you eat that chicken, yes, and you don't let any piece go to waste. No, when you buy our fresh chicken, you're not going to have all these weird cauliflower-looking pieces and all these webby-looking entanglements of skin and, and unidentifiable things. No, with a regular chicken, you're not going to find that. So we eat all of the chicken, eat all the animal, don't let one morsel go to waste because the animal deserves it. And what an animal does not deserve is to be stuffed and glogged and smushed into a tiny blue can. As much as I love this product, I can't endorse this. I can't in good conscience endorse this. So this has been another wonderful episode of Limbo Grub, and this is your good buddy DJ Clyde bidding you adieu. I'm sorry if some of you are disappointed that this item didn't strike enough fear in my heart to send me to the Beef Lodge. Quite frankly, I'm disappointed too. Hey, I want answers as much as the next guy, right? But the first time that I went there, I was a much more anxious guy. Now, I'm laid back, I'm cool in the gang. I don't think there's anything out there that could strike that kind of fear in my heart ever again. So, perhaps I should just chalk it up to there are certain questions in this world that don't get answered? And maybe that they don't need to? You know what, as of this moment for it, I put a fork in that metallic disc storyline. Forget you ever heard of the Beef Lodge, I'm putting it all to bed, life goes on, and so will Limbo Grub roll on. See you next time, kids. in the mirror. Goodbye. 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 It's been a hell of a ride, but finally, this feels like the end game. Thanks for sticking with me all this time. You guys are the best. And now, you can watch me sleep. Good night, everybody.
of space age technology and a marvel of the human mind. I call it the thing. It's waiting. Like a sentient beast waiting in the garage for its inaugural flight. was a bad dream. Oh! 